This video is a follow-on from the last one that was about capacitors and three-phase motor conversion, the testing thereof. So, in that one I referred to DC capacitors and their use. <coughs> so, a friend of mine has been having a bit of um, a discussion over um, reducing the spark on um, contacts by the use of capacitors. So I thought we'd just go through this. First of all, we'll just do a little drawing. Those of you who can remember and are old enough will remember things like Morris Miners, Morris Oxfords, all those sorts of cars where we had a coil and point system. So what you had was in the distributor, and I'll draw this very eccentric, you had a cam where that's the high point and I'll just mark it. And then what you had was a set of points effectively. There was a, a shoe there and this was attached, attached to an arm and a pivot there with, which side shall we do it? It will go that way, so there, with a contact. And then there was another contact here, which went to some sort of, it was on a plate, from what I remember, with a screw and a slot of some form and a pin. Anyway, there you go. So, when that got round to there, those points opened. Okay, and to prevent those points from A, arcing, and B, um, making the point of contact a lot longer in time, so extending the duration, what you used to have was a capacitor, and they called it a condenser, because it condensed the spark. Now if you imagine that that is bolted to the chassis, so effectively it is earthed. So from here, you had a wire to this little gizm, and then that again was bolted to the chassis. So effectively you got the capacitor across the points. So the theory is as old as the hills. So now we shall do some practical experiments. Okay, that's the basic theory, but what I'm going to do now to make it more obvious is I've got this relay here and we'll do a close-up in a moment but we're going to put quite a lot of amps through this set of contacts here we'll just zoom in there's the coil but I'm not going to use that coil I'm just going to manually operate it and just in here are the contacts one there, one there, and that's the moving contact. Hopefully you can see that. And then we've got this resistance wire, which is out of a, the old-fashioned storage heater. So this wire at 50 volts, this length of wire, will draw about 20 amps. So let's do it and see what happens. So this is, uh, this goes all the way around here and goes to the negative and the positive comes up through here to there. So we've got no capacitor on it. Okay. Big fat spark. So what we do now is just show you the theory. We've got some test leads here which will probably make life easier. That clips on there. And that clips on there. So those are effectively across the points, the contacts. We've got a bit of a problem here. Those are sparks. Just behave yourself. So this is the 45 microfarad at 450 volts 
DC. Right, now then, I've just noticed that if you connect this the wrong way around, all you do is you constantly get power going through. Okay, that's given that the capacitor is way over voltage. So if you, pack, if you connect it the right way around, it just zaps once. So that's a little bit of a learning curve. So what we've got now is positive going into the relay, into the contacts, and also a connection to this capacitor. And then the other side of the contacts goes through the resistance to earth, and we've also got a connection to the capacitor. Right, things are going to get a bit warm. So I think we're there. So let's just see what happens with 45 microfarads. Close the contacts, it's on. Switch it off. So 45 is not enough for about 20 amps. So let's change this for a 2500 at 50 volts. Mm. Let's give it a go. Doesn't say it's. Let's see. Connect that on there. Doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, that's warming up. So it sparked the first time just to get the connections to the capacitor right and then it's killed the spark absolutely dead and I'll prove this because I'll take the capacitor off and the sparks back 1500 microfarads does it absolutely perfectly so that spark that uh, zap that we heard just as put the contacts together of course these just contacting properly. That is quite warm. So 2500 microfarads kills the spark dead. So what have we got here? Got a dinky little one here. It's 2000, no, it's 680 microfarads at 200 volts. Let's see if we can try that. And this one is the negative, and negative is the other one, and the pins just, that's charged up, try that. And there it is, and you notice that sparked, just to make a good contact. Take it off. There you go, put it back on, and it will spark just there for a moment. Oh no, it's good contact. There's a little spark there. So you want more than 680, and the 2500 microfarads does it absolutely perfectly.